Let's look at some damn pictures. This is gonna be rad. You are now watching Music the Lifebloods Final Thursday. Hey guys, this is Dustin from Music the Lifeblood. Welcome to Final Thursday. Hi, how are you? How have you been? How are things? I took some time off. I drew some pictures. I indulged in some arts and crafts and it was so amazing. It was restful. But now we're back and it's time to rev up the music, the light blood engines. So here we are on Vinyl Thursday. This first episode back, I wanted to do something a little bit different than what we usually do. See, there's this guy named Maurice Nunez. Everybody calls him Devil Man. What a nickname. I love it. Here he is pictured with the big boss man himself, Mr. Glenn Danzig. We know a little bit about Danzig here at Music the Lightblood. A little bit. Anyway, Maurice is the admin and the guy that runs a website called The Seventh House. It's the official Danzig fan site. And Maurice also runs a big old Facebook group where you get to talk about all kinds of stuff as it relates to Misfits, Sam Hain, and Danzig. It's just a big old gathering of Glenn Danzig fans just being happy about his entire body of work. But anyway, the Seventh House group is awesome. The Seventh House website is absolutely amazing. So go check that out. But we're here to look at Maurice's photography skills. So I went through the Seventh House Instagram and Maurice's, I guess his own personal Instagram, I think, whatever you want to call it. But I found some awesome pictures that I felt like were relative to the Vinyl Thursday body of work and be fun. Let's take a look at him. So here it comes, Devil Man's photography. <laughs> Okay, guys, first up, there's another good look at Maurice himself right there on the right. And then to the left there, we all know who that is. That's the big boss himself, Glenn Danzig. I always get the impression Maurice is super proud of his involvement in the uh, fan community as it relates to Danzig, Sam Hain, The Misfits. Dude's done a ton of live shows. He shot all kinds of pictures, which... Just telling you guys now, this is a part one as far as uh, Maurice's photography goes. I'm going to do a part two that's going to come out in October, which I'm guessing you guys already know what that means. So <laughs> it's going to be great. Super excited about it. So, all right. So part one here. Uh, but before we jump into this, there's an awesome shot of the splash page for the Seventh House official Danzig fan site. Uh, this thing is old school. It goes all the way back to the message board days and how fans interacted with each other and, you know, information got around and stuff like that. So Maurice is definitely old school in that regard. So there's that. Yes, go look at the Seventh House website. Absolutely incredible. And in case you didn't know, the Seventh House has an online store, which there's some sweet designs for t-shirts in the store there um, and the cool thing about this is that it's not all uh straight up danzig sam hayner misfits artwork but it's all related some way or the other it has some sort of tenuous connection to something having to do with danzig sam hayner the misfits which boom right there you can see all those that one on the uh the left over there is super cool and then I like that jack-o'-lantern one on the right. And these shirts are cheap too, guys. So food for thought. There's some more right there. That awesome sort of Ramones tribute one on the top left over there. It's cool because it says Glenn, Tommy, Steve, and Johnny, which the current lineup of the band right now. And you guys know I've interviewed Steve. Steve Zing, obviously, used to play in Sam Hain, now plays in Danzig. Uh, Johnny Kelly, who we all know from Typo Negative, he's been drumming for Danzig for a long, long, long time. And then down there, uh, second one from the left, the seventh house, it looks like the old school Plan 9 logo, which totally cool. But anyway, go check out the online store for the seventh house 
throw Maurice a bone, buy something. Um, and just to point this out too, there's an article archive on the seventh house website. This is just, just a butt ton of press, uh, transcribed, you know, um, uh, interviews, things like that. Uh, which if you're digging for, you know, the minutia when it comes to Danzig or Sam Hain or Misfits trivia, this is a good spot to go check because there's all kinds of good info in there. And then there's the, uh, official Facebook page for the Danzig seventh house. Um, which, yeah, it's cool. There's all kinds of new stuff that gets posted on there. Um, Glenn's been real active the last couple of years. So there's always updates and things like that. And then there's a quick look at the splash page, I guess, whatever you want to call it for the official seventh house group, which I didn't want to, I didn't want to screenshot any posts in there because it is a private group. So, um, yeah, <laughs> well, don't, um, I don't want to, you know, post something that maybe somebody doesn't want anyone to see. So, or at least non members of the group, uh, they would want someone not in the group seat. So anyway, and then this next one here, this is, uh, Maurice's, uh, like I said, everyone calls him devil man. Um, this was a cool, uh, sort of logo that he had posted on his Instagram quite a while back as for, as far as his photography goes. And I just thought it looked cool. It was really, really neat. And then there's a quick screen grab of Maurice's uh, actual Instagram. This is Maurice Nunez photography. Uh, right there it is. You can see, I think the hand, yeah, devilman dot one three eight one thirty eight. The misfits. We are 138. Uh, but yeah, there's a quick, uh, grab of his Instagram profile. So if you guys need to hunt it down and figure out where it's at. But anyway, okay. So let's get into the good stuff. These are the actual pictures. So first up, if it's music, the lifeblood, there has to be some sort of cancer slug, Doyle, Alex story reference. Um, I try to work it in whenever I can because everyone deserves to know more about cancer slug and Doyle as well. So here's a couple awesome shots Maurice got of Doyle live. And right there he is. There's the boss himself, Alex story. Awesome live shot of him. You can see Doyle in the background there. He's pounding on his uh annihilator just awesome shot a lot of um a lot of life happening in that shot right there a lot of uh, action you know it's like i said like maurice has got such a good eye for this stuff and then obviously the the color gradient there just looks amazing and then here's another good one of alex the boss and the monster man himself. So I'm assuming this is probably somewhere in the vicinity of 2019, maybe. So this is probably after as we die was released. So, um, not sure where it was shot at, but, um, I bet, I bet Maurice would probably have it in the notes on his Instagram underneath the photo. So if you want to know, go check it out. But again, here, Maurice caught an amazing, amazing snapshot of what uh, Doyle is like live. You know, you can see, too, uh, obviously, you know, the big man himself over there on the left. I like that um, sort of slight crouch thing that Doyle does when he's stomping around the stage. That's what he's doing. You know, he might be getting ready to do like a, a pick slide or something. <laughs> right there but the cool thing about alex in this photo is that obviously maurice captured alex um moving obviously <laughs> it's an action shot but maurice was able to catch uh just alex in a great emotive pose right there and I, i'm pointing out specifically look at alex's left hand look how it's flexed down there uh, i always think of uh, old school Dungeons and Dragons artwork. Um, I know I've talked about, uh, my bro older brother, Derek. You know, he co-hosts, uh, conversations from the pit sometimes with, uh, Carter and I. And, uh, Derek has a really, really good, uh, he's an illustrator. He's, he's trained. <laughs> he's schooled in illustration. And 
Derek would say that that shot of Alex's hand is absolutely amazing, and it looks like something like maybe um, a wizard or a warlock would be casting a spell, that kind of hand pose right there, which I thought that was really neat. And you can see Maurice has captured the muscle tension in Alex's arm. You know, you can see on his left arm there, uh, or is that his right arm? That's his right arm. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm looking at him on the other side. But in his, uh, uh, his right arm, he's got his bicep flexed right there. So all of this, the way his shirt is laying, you know, along, along his body, his jawline being flexed, you know, he's screaming right there, his left hand. It just all communicates movement. Maurice was able to capture that and it's just in my opinion it's an awesome shot and then obviously the color of it too the green looks absolutely amazing just an uh, awesome 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 shot and then oh I love this one so it's Attila from Mayhem you guys know I absolutely love Mayhem uh, I don't know when this was from again I should have I should have grabbed the you know what the what year Maurice had shot it, but I'm get, if I had to guess, probably somewhere in the vicinity of the release of Esoteric Warfare, maybe the uh, De Mysterious Dom Sathanas um, anniversary touring cycle, maybe. I don't know. Don't quote me on that, but that's an awesome live shot of Attila. And even like we were talking about with Alex... Uh, you can see the muscle tension in Alex's arms and things like that. You know, you don't have to see what the rest of Attila's body is doing because the angle that Maurice got for this shot communicates menace because he's shooting from below. Um, I'm guessing Maurice probably had a, um, a pass, a photography pass to shoot the show. And a lot of time, uh, they'll let the photographers in, um, in front of the barricade. Um, uh, but the, the, the space in between the end of the stage and the barricade that the crowd is being held back by, they'll let photographers go in there. Usually, you know, they'll give them like a little bit of a timed, um, you know, they can't stay there for the whole show, that sort of thing. They'll shuffle photographers in and out, that sort of thing. But the cool thing is this is from shooting, uh, from below Attila up. And what that is doing is that it creates a pose of, uh, like I said, menace of, you know, sort of bigger than life, that, that sort of thing, which again, there on top of the color, it just, Maurice captured something amazing here. You know, I've been, I've been sort of gorging myself on mayhem the last couple of weeks because I'm in preps, preparation to do, um, an episode on mayhem specifically, uh, uh, Damon, Demon. Uh, I don't know what everyone's calling it, but, um, it's spelled, you know, not like we would normally spell Demon in English, but so I don't, I'm not sure about the pronunciation. Anyway, <laughs> it's, uh, doing an episode surrounding that. And then obviously the, um, the newest, uh, EP that had came out recently. So I've been gorging myself on Mayhem the last couple of weeks and they're such a photogenic band. <laughs> which is cool even if it's old school like those shitty photos like that look like they were done with polaroids and stuff like that from the band really really early on before they started touring regularly and they're just they're really really captivating band to look at as it you know when it comes to visually but yeah awesome picture of attila there and then what's this one? Oh, sweet. It's Tony. Tony from Venom Inc. and formerly Venom. Yeah, that's the demolition man himself. I just thought that was, this one was awesome. You know, really, really neat photo of him. You know, I've never, I've never seen another picture of Tony playing that purple bass. Uh, I thought that was interesting. You know, don't know if. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that I've seen him play that bass before. Not saying that he hasn't, but I don't know that I've seen it before. But I really like, uh, that Venom Inc. album from a while back. I think, I think it's good. And Tony does, Tony does a great job, uh, sort of breathing life into those, those old Venom songs with, obviously with Mantos and, um, I don't think Abaddon is playing in Venom Inc. anymore. I think he called it quits, but, um, 
Venom Inc. They're great. They're fucking amazing, in my opinion. I love them. But yeah, great live shot of Tony there. I'm guessing that's a, you know, you can see the background back there. A festival show, maybe. Daytime, because you don't, you know, I don't, it'd be weird. It'd be odd to see Venom during the day, I think, but, but I don't know. That's how festivals are, but yeah, there's Tony giving it his all. You can see what Maurice did too in there. Um, the way he captured this is, uh, look at the background. Background's blurry compared to the foreground. He, uh, he created a more intense focal point on Tony, uh, by, um, uh, he's, he's emphasized what's in the foreground, not the background. Just good composition as far as photography goes. And then here's one of Harley from the Cro-Mags. Great shot of, great shot of Harley, man. That most recent Cro-Mags album too, I was listening to it the other day. It's good. It's really, really, really good. I think it came out towards the end of 2020, but don't quote me on that. I might be wrong. But yeah, awesome shot of Harley. Dude's a good bass player too. I think he doesn't, um, nobody really talks about his skill as a bass player, in my opinion. You know, everybody talks about the Crow Mags, you know, old school, the John Joseph days, that sort of thing. I think the emphasis is on Crow Mags songs as a whole, which is good because the band is, you know, playing for the song, not playing for the, you know, the spotlight, that sort of thing. But Harley as a bass player, dude is good. He's really good. And a vocalist too. Killer vocalist. And then I think there was another one of Harley. Yeah, this one right here. Thought this one was cool. Again here, I'm guessing this was Maurice with a photo pass uh, between the stage and the barricade. So he's shooting up at the band, which when it comes to kind of aggressive music in general, uh, photographers shooting from in front of the stage, looking up to the stage adds to the sort of bombast quality, the bigger in life quality that some of us see our favorite rock stars, whatever the hell you want to call them with. And again, here, Maurice captured an awesome moment in time with this, you know, well composed photograph too. look at the, look at the lights in the background. You know, those are. What those essentially are are sight lines drawing your eyes down to Harley. He, yeah, just, I'm, I feel like I'm going to say this a lot during this episode, but just a well-composed photograph. Great looking photo. Cool thing too is, you know, the, the moment that Maurice captured here, look at the blood on Harley's base. Look at that. You know, that's from the way Harley plays. He plays rough. You know, if that's not blood, maybe it's chipped paint. I don't know, but that looks like blood to me, which all, all adds up to just the, um, uh, the composition of the, the photograph pulling your eye into it. And the longer it, the, the more it keeps your eye into it, the more detail you start to notice that sort of thing, which just killer, killer, killer photograph. All right. I think we got some midnight ones. Yes. All right. So, yeah. Midnight. Our uh, friend of the show, I guess, Athanar, um, which yeah, interviewed Athanar, I think it was last year, I believe. And uh, I love interacting with that guy. He's just such a he's funny as hell, for one. And he's just a flag flyer for metal. Period. End of story. He's just a great sort of spokesperson about how passionate metal fans can be the dude's music collection is staggering absolutely staggering but here's a great shot uh this looks like athenar towards the front of the stage you know you can see the, the fans hands right there just a cool just a cool shot awesome awesome shot midnight live which i had the opportunity um i shot some photographs of Midnight when they were here in Indianapolis at Black Circle Brewery or Brewing. I think it's Black Circle Brewing. Um, but they played a show there. They were with Enforcer, I believe, which was Enforcer was a lot of fun. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, my wife and I were up at the front, right, right next to the stage. And, um, we were right in front of Athenar for most of the show. And, 
Um, it was a lot of fun for my wife. She had a good time. You know, she still, you know, uh, she didn't grow up in, you know, like with metal and punk rock. You know, there's a very big cultural difference between my wife and I. And it was whenever we go to a show, like a metal show, punk rock show, it's still a trip for her. But awesome shot there. I think we got one of Vanek in here too. Yep, there it is. Look at that. Maurice fucking killed it with this photograph. Absolutely killed it. You can see, you know, he's he's obviously handy when it comes to the enhancement of uh, photography when it comes to howing, knowing the the, you know, the right sort of contrast to enhance the image without overdoing it and start, you know, distorting it to the point that, you know, it doesn't look natural. But man, oh man, that is such a great shot of Vanek. Just a killer shot of Vanek. Yeah, those red highlights in the background there. You know, Vanek right there. He's the he's the main focus of the photograph. Just a fucking killer shot. I love that photo. Just absolutely amazing. And Vanek has a player too. Ooh, good lord. If you guys have never gotten to see Midnight Live, put it on your bucket list. Just absolutely killer live. Killer. Amazing band live. And then I think I had one more. Or, no, I got two more. Cool. Here's another one of Athenar. So cool one about this. You know, obviously, you know, Athenar wears the executioner's hood, but the way Marie shot this, he caught the some of the the detail on Athenar's face against that hood that he wears and you can see you know outline of his lips his nose there a little bit of his orbital socket his eye socket whatever you want to call it which in this photo makes it a bit more it's it's got a little bit of a disturbing quality to it because uh it's you know anytime you distort someone's face to where um the their the features of their face aren't easily distinguishable i guess um there's a little bit of a creep out factor to it which you know awesome awesome shot on maurice's part here it's cool and then i think i have one more midnight yeah this one oh god that one's awesome i could see this imagine that photo as uh like a gatefold in the middle, you know, the, the middle picture in a gatefold of an, of a midnight album. That would just fucking, that would look incredible. A midnight live album. You know, I keep, uh, you know, I keep hoping that we'll get a, like a full blown live midnight album as, at some point with like a, a blue ray to coincide with it. And, you know, all kinds of awesome premiums on the inside. Just freaking killer, killer photo. God, I love this one. You know, it looks like I'm guessing Athenar is standing up on a monitor there. Action shot. Vanek right there, probably ripping a solo. And you can see SS back there. Looks like he's about to hammer a couple of his symbols. Awesome, awesome photo. Ah, it's killer. All right. I think King. Yep. There's Mr. Diamond himself. Awesome shot. A lot of photos I see at King Diamond, it, he's a lot of the time red, red light, green, blues. You know, so it's cool to see him, you know, back, backlit with that bright of a light because it highlights obviously the makeup. His facial features, you can actually see his sideburns there. Um, usually he's shot in a way that there's not as much um, detail. You know, he's always sort of wreathed in darkness and where it's hard to make him out sometimes. But yeah, the way Marie shot this, it it pulls your eye to, to his face. Just a killer photo. And there's some detail on his, his bone microphone too, which is neat because you don't usually see that. 
I think there was, um, I remember seeing some shots a long time ago from, I think it was a Merciful Fate show where it was a big, big festival show. It could have been a King Diamond show. I'm not 100%, but there for a couple years, King was leapfrogging tours between Merciful Fate and King Diamond. But I remember seeing a, like a festival show shots of him in the daylight and it was so bizarre looking. You know, the creepy factor alone, you know, with King's makeup and, you know, the, the sort of King Diamond Merciful Fate thing, you know, the occult mysticism and the macabre and stuff like that. So it was odd. It was, it was almost unsettling to see photography shots of King Diamond in the daylight. It was just weird because, you know, you kind of think of him like a, like almost like a vampire in a way that he, he doesn't go out in the sun. So, which made it, it was just odd. It was like, oh my God, he can walk in the sun. He can kill us all. You know, one of those sort of things. But yeah, I love Merciful Fate. And then this one. I thought this one was absolutely incredible. Based on the stage back there um, and that coat, this might have been around the time they were touring. The King Diamond Band was doing the Abigail, the the Abigail album in full. Could be wrong about that. Who knows? Um, I don't know when, I don't know the year that Maurice shot this photo in, but um, that's just my best guess. I could be wrong, though. Um, but still, awesome photo. Again, here. You know, well composed photo to the, um, the fog effect behind King. The, the background be- causes the foreground to pop. There's almost a, a three dimensional quality to this photograph because King, he has a, it's a natural separation from the background, but at the same time too, it pops so well that it's almost as if King is sort of stepping slightly off of the actual photo itself, which killer shot. The detail in King's coat too. You know, if you get a chance, go look at Maurice's Instagram and you can kind of zoom in to some of these photos on the Instagram app and pulls that you can see all the detail that he was able to capture. Great photo. Oh, this one's great. It's Jeff from Possessed. Awesome shot. Awesome, awesome shot. I'm so glad that he's out doing shows. I'm so glad <laughs> he's he's doing he's doing what he's doing. I just think it's it's great. And this photo too. Marie, you get Maurice captured a moment here. You know, when you have the full context of possessed and what he's dealt with in his life, I think this is what makes this photo so much cooler. Yeah, killer. Let's see what we got here. Oh, sweet. Yeah, this is Richie from Priest. Love this photo. Love it, love it, love it. Again here, uh, Maurice is probably in uh, between the barricade and the stage shooting up, which like I said, enhances the sort of demigod-like quality of, of rock stars. I'm guessing this is on the Firepower tour. Um, can't, it's hard to see what the backdrop is back there, but yeah, again here, Maurice's composition is, um, Maurice, um, it looks like he likes to draw your eye to the focal point by, um, you know, using a blurring technique or, contrast to be able to pull the the focal point off of the picture like we were talking about with king diamond just killer killer photo on maurice's part and those lights you know those some of those lights are drawing um eye lines sight lines to um the main focus of the photograph which is richie super cool yeah killer photo see what this one is Oh, sweet. Latane. Yeah, this photo is awesome. I liked, um, I did, Maurice didn't have a ton of photos in black and white on his Instagram, but still, this is absolutely killer. 
It's killer. I love, I love high contrast, black and white or black, white, gray gradient photos. Super cool. Be curious to see if he shot any of this show in color as well, or if he's, I should go back and check. So check to see if he's got any. Oh, yes, he does. Yes, he does. <laughs> Cause I, I think I have another Vatane picture in here, uh, here in a minute. Yes, he does. Now I remember. Still, man, that high contrast image, those bones on the mic stand right there. You got that little, that looks like a blood bag, maybe, you know, just cool. Fucking cool as hell. Those horns on that skull. It's amazing. Let's see what's next. Oh, cool. Yeah, there's one of five. Yeah, there's John five. This one's awesome. This deserves, you know, the, this deserves to be inside of a, you know, a booklet for an album. Just a killer photo, killer photo, especially with John five there in the green. I think that's his lighted telecaster. I believe it's got lights on it. He's kind of doing a ace freely thing there. And then that purple stage background there, it just makes John leap off, leap out of the photograph at you. Killer photo. Just killer. Good Lord. Thing's amazing. Then here's an awesome one of Rob Zombie. Cool one. Lots of contrast there to where you can see all the detail in Rob's coat. Rob's always got really good pants. It's one of the things I most admire about him. He's got great taste in pants. <laughs> Cool action shot, though. Yeah, well composed. All right, what's next? There it is. All right, so this is that that picture of Atain I was talking about. God, that's awesome. Man, that is an amazing photo. They've got such a good, uh, a good grip on the visuals of black metal. You know, there's certain kinds of, you know, there's, there's a there's a variety in black metal you know the more polished side obviously and then there's the dirty lo-fi you know underbelly of the genre too and you know Vatain has uh, their albums have that sort of polished thing going on where there's you know a little more um a little more effort put into visuals and mixes and things like that which this looks great. And the the visual noise that Maurice was able to capture in this photo, the what looks like you know scratches and like I said visual noise on the photograph, unless that's confetti, <laughs> but I don't I don't see <laughs> I don't see Vlatane, you know, uh, cannon, you know, blowing off a confetti cannon, you know, at their live shows. I don't see that happening, but yeah, yeah. I'm assuming that's, that's all visual noise that, um, Maurice has been able to compose and capture in this photograph, which damn. Again, here, perfect candidate, uh, you know, a perfect photo candidate for a gatefold and an album. Just. God, that's an awesome photo. Yeah. The highlights on, I believe that's, I, th I believe his name is Eric, the singer of Atene. I think he's, I might be wrong on that though, but the highlights on his arms, the edge of the neck of his base, his forehead up there, a couple little things popping on the microphone stand. You know, I always like backlit. I think photos with a that are backlit, brighter background, darker foreground are always really, really cool looking. I think of um, the opening scene to A Nightmare on Elm Street when Tina is running down that dark hallway and there's a, a corridor, a doorway at the at the other end of the hallway that's lighted bright, bright, you know, blinding white, and the hall 
in the foreground and then Tina kind of crossing, running towards the camera and moving around in the foreground. It reminds me of that. Just visually, it looks striking. Absolutely striking. Okay, let's see what else we got here. Oh, yeah, this. Yeah, I just thought this this photo was cute. It's Papa. Mr. Forge. Great looking photo. What I loved about this too was the, um, Maurice was able to capture all the details in the mask, the Papa masks there. So like I said, go to the Instagram and you can, you know, everybody knows you can zoom in on photos and Instagram and, you know, look at the detail on the mask here. It's cool. I'm guessing that's a, uh, Maybe a record, an in-store appearance, possibly, like a signing. And then here's an awesome shot of Joey from Slipknot. I thought it was, uh, uh, I thought it'd be cool to, to put this in at the end of the episode because, you know, as of recording this, Joey uh, passed away a couple days ago. And I thought this was an excellent, excellent moment that Maurice captured of Joey. You know, everybody, everybody talks about, uh, Joey as, um, as a drummer. Um, and he's an incredible, or he was an incredible drummer, absolutely incredible drummer. I can't think of, or I can't think of a bad thing to say about his drumming. Dude was top notch, period, end of story. But more so, the thing that I always uh, got from Joey was that uh, he was just a flag flyer for metal. He was just so passionate about metal music, just heavy music in general. And I don't know if you guys know, um, John Carter, um, he's my co-host on Music the Lightblood's Conversations from the Pit. Carter is from the same area of Iowa a bunch of the Slipknot guys are from. And Carter had a lot of interaction with uh, Joey and Paul from Slipknot. Um, and I've never heard Carter say a single bad thing about all the interactions that he had had with those guys over the course of you know, being young and playing in bands in, in Iowa. And it's just one of those sayings where, you know, yes, it's, yes, it's a monumental loss. It's a horrifying loss for metal. But I think at the same time, too, it's an even bigger loss for just good people. You know, I think, I think Joey was, from what I understand, everything I can put together, I just think he was a really, really good person. So, yeah, Maurice captured a moment here. Captured a really, really, really cool moment. Yeah, incredible picture of Joey. All right, before we end this segment, just give you one last look at Maurice's uh, Instagram profile just so you guys can find it. Looks like the handle is devilman dot one three eight maurice nunez photography and then there's a seventh house uh instagram as well so um, a lot of his photos are posted on there too but um i'm going with his actual photography profile um just super cool dude has got an amazing eye and in october we're going to talk about even more <laughs> <laughs> stuff that's came from his amazing eyes. So I'm super excited to do this, uh, part two of this episode. So yeah, go check him out. All right, guys, that's it for this week's episode of vinyl Thursday. Have you checked out Maurice's Instagram? Have you checked out the seventh house website? All these questions and many, many more, let us know in the comment section below. Usually this is where I would do the thing where I talk about all the other music like blood content and where to find it and the Patreon and how to give us money and that there's merch and blah, 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 blah. But I'm fucking tired of doing it. So if you want more of the stuff, go do the thing. I'll leave it at that. 
All right, that is it. Music to Lifeblood, something old, something new. I like that picture. Dare I say, I love it. What are you listening to? Hey kids, this is your old buddy, the devil. I just wanted to call a timeout from burning all these souls into eternal damnation. To let you guys know that if you don't want to go to hell, you should probably join the MTLB Ultra Mega Militia. You can do that by taking part in the MTLB Ultra Mega Value Exchange. You see, you get all of this free MTLB content, and then you get to decide what it's worth to you. And then you exchange that value with Music to Lifeblood. So if it's going to be money, you want to go the money route and be like, this fucking episode is worth $10. Sweet. All you got to do is PayPal that over to musicallifeblood at gmail.com or you can do reoccurring installments at patreon.com backslash musicallifeblood. You know, kind of like you were dating. It's a regular sort of thing. You don't want to be like all these guys. Because they're going to fucking burn in hell for the rest of eternity. And you guys don't want to burn in hell for eternity. But also, if you ain't got money right now, you can just share some music to life like content on social media. That'll be fun. That'll keep you out of hell. And if you guys do take part in the MTLB Ultra Mega Value Exchange, you'll be a part of the MTLB Ultra Mega Militia. That'll probably get you into heaven. You go hang out with my old buddy, Jesus, and his dad. They're pretty fun. They like to have a good time. You probably listen to Cannibal Corpse and Skeleton Witch. Have big old parties. Well, I'm down here with all these other guys that didn't take part in the MTLB Ultra Mega Value Exchange. Poking them with pitchforks and burning their toes and throwing hot lava on their faces, I guess. Anyway, stay out of hell. Take part in the MTLB Ultra Mega Value Exchange so you can be part of the MTLB Ultra Mega Militia. Alright. Hopefully I won't be seeing you guys later. <laughs>